Hello and welcome to Zen and the Art of the Guardian Sudoku Puzzle for Monday the 18th of January it's a new week in a fairly new year and uh, today's Sudoku Puzzle is at the easy level so we may be welcoming complete beginners here today or uh, possibly false beginners do you know what a false beginner is? somebody who's maybe tried it before and given up or maybe someone who uh, has read the rules but gets a bit confused and stops, uh, but starts again. Or uh, maybe we have some medium level players here just uh, enjoying a fairly easy level of Sudoku um, just for fun. And uh, so, but since we may have some absolute beginners here, I'd like to quickly explain. First of all, I'm going to explain the rules, but I'm also going to try to enthuse you about playing Sudoku and explain to you why you should waste your time on such a game. Well, first question of course is should any of us waste time on games? And I think as human beings uh, we can't just work constantly flat out. Um, people who tell you that they are workaholics still need some kind of relaxation at times I think and Sudoku is quite a nice thing. Um, if you haven't played it before you may be wondering about the numbers and seeing that it's something to do with maths. Well it really is nothing whatsoever to do with maths. It is entirely a puzzle of logic and uh, for that reason um, it's wonderful uh, for non-mathematicians and uh, it's uh, when you achieve, when you finish the game um, when you finish that last number, it gives you some sense of, um, I can't say jubilation, that's a bit too strong, although sometimes when it's really difficult, maybe that might be the case. But certainly satisfaction that you've used your logic to crack a puzzle and uh, you've, you know, you've beaten it. Um, so that's the main reason for playing Sudoku. Um, in today's news, uh, Phil Spector has died. Phil Spector, wall of sound creator in his early days in the 60s, for those of you old enough to remember groups like the Ronettes, um, an amazing sound, but also uh, later in life apparently rather insane and crazy and um, convicted for murder and in fact died uh, being imprisoned for murder. Um, that's insanity. We need sanity and logic to play Sudoku. So let's try to begin. Now, what do you do when you see a puzzle? First of all, we have to explain the rules because we may have some beginners here. Those of you who want to fast forward a little bit, uh, I'm just going to go through the rules. If you, if you know the rules already, you might be able to fast forward. Um, so but basically, we have a large grid here, which is divided into nine segments and each of these segments is divided into nine squares three six nine okay um, so that's the overall shape of what we call the grid um, now the rules of the game are actually pretty simple um, and that is that each segment must contain numbers one two three four five six seven eight and nine and since there are nine squares that means they can only appear one time um, so that's within this region here, this square here, larger square, this box if you prefer. Um, but then what we also have to understand is that each column down, this column, this column, this column, must also contain numbers 1 to 9. There are in fact 9 squares, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 squares in a column. And of course you're one step ahead of me already and, and I'm sure you've guessed that these rows across must also contain numbers 1 to 9 since there are 9 squares. So that's it. So how do we solve the puzzle? Well we solve the puzzle by trying to find out what is impossible, what cannot go um, and when we find as I think it was Sherlock Holmes uh, once said something like after you've eliminated the impossible what's left uh, must be true and that's how it works with Sudoku. So that's what we do. Now, if you're wondering how do I start, 
well, uh, maybe one way to start is by looking at uh, an area that has quite a lot of numbers. So, I mean, <clears throat> this is not always true, but I mean, here we have fewer, seem to have, without counting, there seem to be more numbers at the bottom, or they seem to be concentrated rather more heavily at the bottom than they are at the top. So why not just take a look at the bottom, first of all. Now, uh, I can see something immediately, and you may or may not be able to see this, but uh, if we consider two things, either we can consider this row going across, or we consider this segment in the left-hand side, the same thing applies, but there is a 2 in this square here, and if we extend this 2 across, like so, we know that, remember, this row must contain numbers 1 to 9, and we already have a 2, so no other square can contain a 2 here. Okay, so not that one, not that one, not that one. And here, the same thing applies, that we have a 2 in this row going across, so not, 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 none of the others can be 2. So if we know that 2 cannot appear in this square or this square, and 2 cannot appear in this square or this square, there is only one square left. So we are blocked here, and we're blocked here. So this is the only possible location where a 2 can go, and so we can write in that number. We know it's a 2 for sure. <clears throat> okay. Now, let's. this row has a lot of numbers already, 7 in fact, because there are only two numbers missed, two blank squares. There's a blank square here and a blank square here in this row. So, since we have the majority of it, 80%, uh, sorry, um, <laughs> sorry, not 80%, 70 something percent um, already, um, let's find out what the missing numbers are. So we've got one, we've got two. Do we have number three in this row? No. So that's one of our missing numbers. Four, five. Do we have six? No, we don't have a six in this row. So our, our two missing numbers are three and six in this row, okay, along here. That's what's missing. Uh, you don't need to put numbers outside like this, but it, if you find that it helps you when you're beginning, then you can do that if, that, if you find that that helps. Um, it's not really essential. And when you get a bit more experienced, you'll find you don't need to do this kind of thing because we're going to write inside the squares. Anyway, this number and this number are missing, and 3 and 6 are missing from this row. Now, in this box, in this segment here, there is a number 6 already. So if you remember, within this area here, we can only have numbers 1 to 9 one time. So we have 1, 2, and 3 we don't have, 4, no, 5, yes, 6, yes, we have already, 7, no, 8, um, we don't have. So because we know that 6 is already here and we can't have it again, then that means that this number here has to be 6 because there is a 3 and a 6 missing in this row. I'm going to put in 6 here. And there was only one number missing now, and that, remember, it was only 3 or 6, so the 3 goes in here, like that. And I hope that makes sense. That's our first um, logic, logically arrived at um, digit. And as I say, let's keep looking down in this region, but don't get stuck in one area all the time. Um, it's important when you're playing Sudoku to look around the grid, always look around the grid, and you know, don't, don't just get stuck in one part. Now, I can see in this um, segment here, that there is a 1 in this column coming down. So remember, there can be no other 1s in this column coming down. So that means that these two squares are blocked. Okay, and There is also a 1 in this row coming across, so there cannot be another number 1 in this row. So we are blocking here, and we are blocking here, which leaves only this square here, as a location for one. It can't come anywhere else. Let's look at um, th uh, another number in this area here now. Uh, I can see that there's a 3 in this column, and if you extend it down, all the way down, you can see that there cannot be a 3 here. There is a 3 in this row here, 
you see you have to move your eyes back and around the grid there's a three in this row here so that means there cannot be another three in this row you understand so there's no three here and there's no three here so what's our only option it's here so the three is going to appear here like so now you might say okay there are only two numbers left um, what what are they one two three do we have a four no we don't do we have a five no we don't but what happens now do we just guess and then the answer is no never 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 guess Sudoku will not be your friend and Sudoku will never be satisfying if you just guess the answer no we wait we wait and um, what we can do also to help us later on is we could put in both of the missing numbers but we won't put them in as a large letter like this we'll put them in a uh, large number sorry we'll put them in as small figures so remember it's four and five that are missing here so we're going to put them in like this four and a five and then four and a five but we won't put them in the heavy pen yet by the way you'll need a pen and a pencil or a pencil and eraser or 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 maybe um, just two different types of writing implement i think when you're playing sudoku to make it clear whether something is your final answer or just something that's a possible answer so four and five are possible answers here um, and we call these candidates So four and five are our candidates. Okay. <clears throat> now, where do we go next? Well, let's come back to this square here, this region here, and consider something. We have numbers one, two, three, four. We don't have five or six or seven uh, or nine. Well, we could see if you look. And try to go through the numbers you'll see something but I, certainly we can see a 9 I think might be quite useful here because uh, you know move your eyes around things that are intersecting so there's a 9 intersecting this segment here like this coming down there's a 9 going across so if you consider that this column can't contain any other 9s and this row can't contain any other 9s there's only one place left where a 9 can go and that means it's it has to go there now there is uh, something else that I think is quite interesting here um, okay uh, the six here comes across doesn't it six you can see it comes across this row like so and therefore that blocks a six from being here or here and so a six has to come here like so um, now uh, as before we have two missing numbers can we find out what they are one two three four do we have a five no six yes do we have a seven no we don't so the missing numbers are five and seven but actually this so five and seven here or here those are missing from here but if we check and look what's intersecting we can see this five coming down and not allowing a five to be filled in here so five must be here like so and seven which is our last number has to go here now this will if you come back and remember we had a four, possible four or five here but we weren't sure which it was but now we know that it can't possibly be five because in this row in this bottom row we now have a five there's only one number missing so we can you know you could do it like this cross out the five and see what's left the four is left and here you can cross out the four and see what's left well it's a five that's left And this is how we go through the entire puzzle. Um, now you might be saying, is that it? And the answer is yes, that is it. But um, as you get to the more difficult puzzles, then it 
means that you will need to understand more and more about how logic works and which numbers can go where, how, they, how you can define what is allowable. Um, and that's really the fun of the game. So it's you know continuing to take on more and more difficult challenges, I think. There are three numbers missing here. One of the missing numbers is an 8. We don't have an 8 in this segment here. But I can see an 8 coming down already in this column, and I can see an 8 coming down already, and we know that. It's, that means it blocks this square, and this 8 blocks this square. So we know there has to be an 8 here, like so. There are two numbers missing. What are they? 1, 2, 3. Do we have 4? No. 5, 6. Do we have 7? No. So the missing numbers are 4 and 7, but there aren't any intersecting 4s or 7s to tell us which is which. So we have two candidates, so we're going to write them in the squares like that to remind us later. It will help us um, when we need reminding what, square, what numbers are missing here. Uh, okay, now, so you'll say, well, that's great. Now the bottom section is filled in. Uh, where do we go now? Hmm, that's a good question. In Sudoku, where do we go now is never an easy answer. As I said um, previously, I think you often have to make sure that you cast your eye around. You're looking for help, clues, signals and things. Um, just from any place that, 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 that can be helpful, really. Um, now, I have seen something which is a little bit more advanced, but I think I'm going to show you uh, now. Um, so when you, when you get slightly better, um, when you've practiced more, I should say, and say it like that, and you get... Um, the game seems to become easier. You tend to find patterns like this, but this is a bit thinking ahead, a bit of thinking ahead, something like chess. But if you imagine that this nine in this row eliminates any other uh, square in this row from being a nine, do you agree? So nine cannot be here, 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 which leaves only two possible locations in this segment for the nine to go. So I'm going to write in these candidates this pair of nines. And now if you consider that these nines have, there has to be a nine here or here, and so we therefore know that the nine is, these either this one or this one is going to block any other nines from here. So in other words, this cannot be nine, this cannot be nine. Okay, it's blocking here. Now we also have a nine down here uh, in this column which is working its way up, and so that eliminates this, this, and this. So, so far we have eliminated this, 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 this. And But look, if we, we consider the rows, there is a 9 blocking these three squares, and there's a 9 blocking this square. So we are blocked, 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 blocked. There's only one possible location a 9 can go. Now you tend to see these things more and more, and more easily um, when you've had more practice at Sudoku. Okay, uh, just casting my eye around, I can see that four. Uh, there are fours. In, there's a four in this column here, which blocks anything from appearing here. There's a floor, four here, which blocks anything from appearing here. So in this segment at the top here, also there is a a four, a four blocking here. So we are blocked, blocked, and blocked. There's only one location for four. Um, one thing that is often quite useful is that if we have just filled in a number, that number can often help us find numbers more quickly. Now this 4 that we just filled in, if we extend it back along this row, like so, we know that this is not 4, this is not 4, and this is not 4, right, that's blocked. And here we have 4s blocking this row here, so blocked, blocked. That's the only possible location for a 4. Um, something I've seen um, just 
from experience I think is going to be quite useful. So here is a 2 which runs across this central row here. Okay, So we know that that's not 2, that's not 2, that's not 2. So we know that 2 has to appear here or here. Now we already had 9 as appearing here or here. And when we have a pair that can't go anywhere else, so a pair of 9s and a pair of 2s that can't go anywhere else, we know that no other candidates can be written into this square. This is either a 9 or 2, can't be anything else. This is either a 9 or 2, can't possibly be anything else. Now sometimes when we're looking for candidates, we find several possible places where they could appear. Um, but um, nothing else can come there. Okay. Um, I think I will look at these two columns, which have quite a lot of numbers in them already, and see if there are any, see if there's anything useful. Uh, first of all, number that's missing is one from this column here. Now, we can say that it appears in either of two locations. Okay, so there's a 1 missing from this column, but there is a 1 in this segment here, meaning that 1 cannot appear here, right? We can only have it one time in a segment, so there's no 1 possible here. That means that a 1 could come here or here, so our candidate 1 we can fill in like so. And uh, that's hopefully going to be useful later. Okay, so one is here or here, two, three, we have four. Do we have five? No, we don't have five. Is it exclusively in two locations within a, a segment? Answer, no, it's not. Six, do we have six in this column here? In Well, we have a six blocking here. So we do have two possible locations for 6. 6 is going to appear either here or here, but we are not going to write that in as a pair because it is in two different segments, not in the same segment. Um, but what we can do is we can see that this 6 from here blocks anything from this column and this 6 blocks anything from this row. So there are there is a pair of 6s here, but it's like this. Okay, so we know that that's a 6 and that's a 6. So just to recap, we're writing in pairs of numbers, but the pair must be in the same segment, not a pair because we have a 6 here, a possible 6 here, and a possible 6 here. They are not in the same segment. We won't consider that as being a pair. Okay. Um, okay, and the fives uh, won't much use. So that's not much else we can do there. So now this is something else that people uh, might not understand when you first begin playing is that you look at something, you look at a segment, or you look at a row or a column, and you decide, okay, nothing very helpful, let's move on and change my focus to somewhere else. And this is something you have to do, move away and look at something else. Um, now this particular column here, there are three numbers missing, so we have seven already, so let's have a look and see if anything's interesting here. One is missing from this column. Are there any pairs? No, there aren't. Uh, two we have, three, four, five. Do we have a six in this column? No, we don't have a six. Okay, there's no six here. But there is a six in this segment here. So what does that mean? It can't be here or here. So there is only one possible location for a six to appear. It has to go there. Okay. Now I did mention to you that when you fill in a number, it can help you to with other things. So let's see about this 6 that we just filled in. Now actually, if you extend this 6 along now, you'll see that 6 cannot go in this square here. Now we already know from looking at 6s uh, just a moment ago, that 6 is blocking this square as well. Right? So. 6 can't appear here, and 6 can't appear here. So this square and this square are eliminated 
but we need a 6 in this row, so what does it mean? It means that we know that this has to be a 6. Now, important thing to do, because 6 was a pair of numbers, we have to eliminate the other candidate 6 by crossing it out. If you're using a pen and a rubber or eraser, as Americans call them, rubbers meaning something weird in American English, <laughs> uh, then get rid of the number anyway somehow, obliterate it. Make a hole. No, don't make a hole in the paper. But something else happened nice here, and that is we put in a six, but we had a pair of ones here. We decided before that one had to appear either here or here, and now we know that it can't appear in this square because we know that's a six. So we can put a one in here, like so. And now I think you can see there is only one number missing from this column. Now, if there's only one number missing from a column, a segment, or a row, you can find that number always. So what's missing? One, two, three, four, five. Five is the number missing. So we're going to put that in now. Like so as I said, once you've done a number, see if it's helpful to you. And this five is, because if we extend this five back along this row, like so, it blocks those squares. If we look at this 5 over here, it's blocking this bottom row here, like so. So blocked, blocked, but there's also a 5 down here, if you notice, in this column. So blocked, blocked, blocked. There's only one possible position a 5 can go. That 5 that we've just filled in, if we extend that up this column, like so, and this 5, we extend up this column like so. We know that 5 can't appear here or here. So you might be thinking, oh, it's anywhere here. But if you remember, <coughs> excuse me, 9 and 2 must go here and here. Nothing else is allowed. So now there's only one possible position for a 5. It has to go here. And that's how our logic um, helps us find the missing numbers. Sorry, it's a bit noisy here. I usually have this problem of uh, motorbikes. Uh, here in Thailand, where I'm based, uh, motorbikes are a big thing. Um, in this square, um, I noticed that there is a 1 extending up this column here. And remember, we already know that this has to be 9 or 2, so there is only one possible position left where one can go. It has to go here because it can't come here or here or here. Now we must be able to find out this last number because we know this is 9 or 2, 9 or 2, so there's only one remaining number. And if you go through and count through, you'll find it's 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 we don't have. So that's our missing figure. In it goes. Next thing is, we notice there's only one square missing from this row. We must be able to find what it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do we have an eight? No, we have a nine. There's no eight. So our missing number is eight. The eight that we just filled in, will that help us find more? Yes, it will. If we extend it down this column like so, and we look back here at 8s in this row and 8s in this row. We are blocking here, blocking here, and blocking here. There's only one possible location, and 8 can go, and it's there. Uh, we have two numbers missing from this row. The missing numbers are 1 and 9, I believe. Okay, we don't have a 1 and we don't have a 9 in this row. But we do have an intersecting 1 here, blocking 1 from going in this location. Right, 1 can't appear here, and so it has to go here. The other missing number was 9, so we'll fill that in. But remember our pair, our exclusive pair of 9 and 2. Now we see a 9 is blocking this. So that has to be 2, and now 9 is the only number that's left to go here. This game, if you're watching me play this game, believe me, this is much more satisfying when you're playing it yourself. Uh, you're watching me play it to explain the rules, explain how to find pairs, but once you do it yourself, 
you'll love it, I think, if you enjoy logic. And even if you didn't know that you enjoyed logic, I think that you will enjoy doing Sudoku. Uh, ones that extend up this column here, ones extend across this row, and we'll, there's a one in this column now, which comes down. So we are blocking here, blocking, blocking. There's only one possible location for a one. Um, okay. What numbers are missing here? We have one, two, three, four. Do we have five? Yes, five. Do we have six? No, I can't see a six. Do we have seven? Uh, no, I can't see a seven. So we have eight, nine. So the two missing numbers here are 6 and 7. We can put these in as candidates. So you'll see something, so you might be thinking, well, oh, I put these candidates in at the beginning. Uh, is that it? But the answer is no. You'll be putting, filling in candidates all the way through, and sometimes right almost to the end. Uh, you'll need to fill in candidates um, to help you um, remember or find what's missing. Okay, um, now in this region here, we're going to, there are three numbers that we don't know, and we're going to find out what they are. And the missing number is 2, we don't have a 2. Another missing number is 3, and the other missing number is 4. 2, 3, and 4. So let's see the 2 is blocking this square, so we have two possible locations here or here where a 2 could go. So we're going to fill that candidate in like this. And this 3 is blocking this same square here, but from this point here. So 3 can't come here, so 3 has to go here or here. Now we've got 6 and 7 we know is here or here. 2 and 3 we know is here and here. There is only one remaining square. We must know what it is. That's a rule to follow. So 1, 2, 3. Do we have 4? No. So that is a 4. Now, below it, we had our candidates 4 and 7, and now we know that can't possibly be 4. The 4 has to appear here, and it has to be 7, because that's the only remaining number. Our lower half is, or third, I should say, is um, now complete. Um, but we, aren't, we haven't finished the grid yet. We still have more work to do. So uh, let's continue on. Uh, I happen to see that this 5 uh, blocks these two squares here, and there is no 5 in this segment. 5 is blocking here, and so there's only one place the 5 can go. It has to go there, like so. That 5 can help us, now that we've filled it in, if we consider it blocks these two squares, like this, and we have a 5 blocking this column, so we are blocked and blocked. There's only one location for a 5 here. It has to go there. In this segment again, one of the missing numbers is 2. There are three missing numbers. One of them is 2. This 2 blocks this square and this square. You see it running across this row. And so there's only one place left it can go. Back, sweep back here because we notice there's an, a single square empty. We can always find out what that is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Do we have a 7? No, we have 8, 9, so it's a 7. There is only one square missing empty in this segment here. So we know 1, 2, is it a 3? Yes, there aren't any 3s here yet, so 3 has to appear there like so. Uh, there are two numbers here. Let's see if we can find them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 we don't have, 8 we don't have. Now, are there in, any intersecting? We have to look for intersecting 7s or 8s. Yes, there's an intersecting 8 here, blocking 8 from going here. So 8 must appear here. And there's one number left, which is 7 going there, like so. There are two numbers missing from this column. Let's try to see what they are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
Uh, is there a six? No, we don't have a six. Is there a seven? No, we don't have seven, eight, nine. So the missing numbers here are six and seven. It's a pair of six and sevens. Now, since we have a column, we need to look at the rows for intersecting sixes or sevens. And guess what? We have an intersecting six here. So six blocks this square from being a six. Six has to appear here. Seven has to appear here. Earlier on, we had a pair of six and seven here. Now we can see that can't be six. It has to be seven. Six has to appear here like so. We are whittling down the numbers now. Not, not many left. It gets, the puzzle gets, you will believe in that way that the puzzle gets uh, easier in a linear fashion. But that's not true when you get to the difficult puzzles. Um, sometimes in a difficult puzzle, you might think, oh, I've got this far, it must be easy now. But actually in a difficult expert level puzzle, it can be extremely hard even when you have only a few div digits left. Um, I'm not trying to put you off. I'm encouraging you to play it, but um, I'm just saying that it's not a game that happens in a linear fashion always. Uh, right now, let's see. There is no four in this segment here, but I can see a four blocking here and a four blocking here. So that must be a four here by process of elimination. The two missing numbers are two and three in this segment. Are there any intersecting twos and threes? No. So we'll be diligent and write two and three in here, like so. And now we'll see a nice logic pattern. We have a two and three and a two and three here. So that is, a, even though these are not in the same segment, they are exclusive in this row now because two and three was exclusive in this segment, two and three was exclusive in this segment. So this and this have to be two and three. It means that this square here cannot be two or three. Okay, I'll just say that once more. Two and three were exclusive in this segment, two and three exclusive in this segment, and now they appear in the same row, and that means that this cannot be two or a three. So it's the only remaining square, so we can work out what it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is there a seven? No. There's an eight and a nine. So that is a seven there. And we've almost finished the puzzle now. One, two, is there a three in this column here? There is not. So we know that a three goes in here. We've just filled in that number. Let's extend it across here where we had our pair of two and three. We know that that can't be three, it has to be two. We know that this can't be two, it has to be three. But equally, we know that this now can't be three, it's got to be two. And we had a pair, so that has to be three. Just two numbers left to find. We can easily finish the game now. One, is there a two in this uh, row here in the segment? No, and that is the two. And the last number is one. And there you have a very easy puzzle solved. Um, you've learnt several things. You've learnt how to find numbers. Um, uh, by process of elimination and you've learned how to fill in candidates and when a candidate is a pair uh, what it means for other squares in the segment or the row or the column well I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I've encouraged you to go off and find some easy Sudoku puzzles that you can try for yourself and don't worry about uh, if you don't worry that if you make mistakes or get it wrong at the beginning uh, you can get it right, it takes a bit of practice um, and after you've tried a few and got a few right uh, it will get easier. You m will still make mistakes. I've been playing this game for many years and I still sometimes make mistakes um, just from lack of clear observation or sometimes faulty logic but not often through faulty logic. Um, but anyway, mistakes are there to be made. Um, we are not perfect. Life is not perfect, um, but Sudoku is uh, a good game. That's it for today. Uh, come back and try some of the more difficult puzzles. Another, try and find another easy puzzle. Um, there are several already, I think, uh, in this channel. You can subscribe to the channel. 
and uh, we have every level puzzle. These are daily, um, whatever level comes out of the Guardian or the Observer on Sunday. That's it for today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.